In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a vintage photo effect in Photopea. Hi there, my name's Gareth and welcome to this video. Before we start here, I'm just going to let you know that all the images used in this tutorial are available in the description box below as links that you can download yourself so you can play around and follow along in your own time. Okay, so the first step in this process is we're going to add a sepia tint and like a just give a nice colour tint to the shot to start off that vintage effect. So to do this, I'll click on the Adjustment Layers icon, and I'm going to choose Hue Saturation. And we'll click on the Colorize checkbox down at the bottom, which will just make it a flat black and white tone. Now if we increase the saturation, maybe to something like 15, somewhere around there, we're going to now push some colour tone into the image. And with the Hue slider, we'll now drag this to the right until we get a nice sort of yellowish, warmish tone. Don't want it to be too strong. I always find that values between 10 and 30 work quite well for this, this effect. Somewhere around there. And now you can play with the saturation and increase the tint, the strength of the tint, or decrease it. You just don't want the image to look too cold and black and white like that. You just want a bit of a colour tint to a warm tint. Somewhere around that is fine for me, so I'm going to leave it there. We can always come back and change this later. Now the next adjustment layer I like to do is I like to go to Brightness Contrast. And what I want to do here is just fade the image a bit so it's not so punchy, just to give it a little bit of a flatter, less contrast look. So we can just decrease the contrast here. And if you look at the darker areas, like in the bottom of a hair, you just see the, the contrast gets pulled out of the image, just giving it a slightly flatter look. Now, if you want a more dramatic version of this, let's just take the contrast back to zero or close to zero. If you check this Use Legacy box, it will do a far more dramatic effect. Sorry, as you can see here now, the contrast is even pulled out evenly across the whole image and it gives a lot more of a dramatic look and I quite like this. So I'm gonna maybe go to about minus 15. Let's turn that on and off. And we can come back and adjust this later again, nothing set in stone here. Okay, so we've got our color and our sort of contrast reduction. And the third layer I want to add in here is actually some texture. I've got a separate file here, and again, it's, it is available in the description box for a download, for a free download, so you can use it yourself. And I'm just going to drag it into the Photo P canvas here from my desktop. Okay, let me just zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole canvas. Now, as you can see, it's like a grungy paper texture with some water stains on it and watermarks and all other bits of dust and things like that. And this is perfect for this kind of image because it's just going to add a lot of character and really help to sell that old photo vintage look. So make sure it covers the whole canvas because otherwise when we change the blend mode, it's going to put line hard lines down the edge. And for a texture like this, I like to use multiply blend mode, but you can experiment with others and just see the effects for yourself and just have a bit of fun. Okay, so what has this done exactly? Let's have a look at, sorry, let me get rid of that. Let's have a look at what this has actually done. So it's dark in the image overall, and that's because the texture itself was gray rather than white, the paper of the texture. So that on multiply, that has then darkened the image a bit, which I actually quite like, but we can adjust that later. And it's also blended in nicely all the dirt and grime and the stains and things. So it's really added a lot of character to that shot straight away. If this is too much for you, of course, you can always reduce the opacity of the texture layer to just blend between the original and the texture. So maybe if you, if you don't quite like the grime being so strong and the dirt and all those artifacts being so strong, you can knock it back. I like this at about 80%, so I'm going to leave it there for the moment. So if you just wanted a basic kind of vintage effect look, then you could probably just use this as it is if you are confident that or sorry, if you're not confident in, in going more in depth, you could stop here and it will be a great effect. But I want to show you a, another effect here to take it to the next level. And this is going to be like a selective blur, so like selective focus. So I'm going to go down to the model layer at the bottom again. And as you can see in the bottom right corner of the little thumbnail icon, it's got a square. It's got like a little square icon. Now that means that that layer is a smart object. and I'll go into smart objects in depth in a separate video, but for now, just know that it means 
that you can adjust this image, add filters and other effects to it, and it will it will edit them in real time so it won't be applied to the image destructively. It will be a live effect that can be adjusted at any time, which is great for what we want. So if yours hasn't got that icon in the corner, then all you have to do is right click on the layer and just press convert to smart object and then you'll see it. So now we know it's a smart object, we're going to go into the filter menu, go to blur and choose either box blur or Gaussian blur. They're quite similar. Box blur is a, is a little less refined, but it's easier on your computer's resources. So I like to use this one because it just gives um, a nice general blur, but it doesn't slow down your computer too much. Now, I'm going to choose a blur overall that's not too much. So I would call this too much because you can't see any of the details at all. And I would say this is not quite enough. So we're looking for something in between where you can still make out the features, but the blur effect is quite obvious. Now don't go by my exact settings here because I've resized this image so it'll be different on yours. Just go by the overall look and play with the slider until you get to something around here and click OK. Now because this is a smart object, it now creates that blur as a smart filter. So you can, hear, you can see here under the model layer, it's got smart filters and box blur. So if we check the little eyeball next to it, it'll turn the effect on and off. And what we have here is effectively a layer mask for that effect. So with layer masks, again, we're going to layer masks in a separate video as well in depth. But for now, you just need to know that whatever's white will reveal the effect and whatever's black will conceal. So white reveal, black conceal. So as this layer mask for the smart filter is completely white, it means that the blur effect is completely revealed. So what we can do here is we can click on that layer Go to our brush tool by pressing B or pressing the icon on the toolbar. I just want to right click and make sure the hardness is set to zero because we want a soft brush for this. Now with black as our foreground color, we're now going to paint in the focus in effect. So wherever we paint black is concealing or hiding the blur effect. So I don't want obviously the whole image this blurred. So I'm going to just brush across her face and we're now selectively brushing in areas that we want to be sharp or sharpened. Now you can do this the opposite way around and start off with the effect completely hidden and then brush in the areas you want blurred with a white brush. So you can do it the other way around. But because on this shot, I know that there's probably going to be less areas that I want in sharp focus than a blurred. It's just easier to do it this way. I hope that makes sense. Um, but what we're doing here is, again, this isn't technically true to how depth of field works with cameras and blur fall off. But in these old style shots, you tend to have sort of unpredictable areas of focus happening in the shots. And again, even though it's not technically accurate, it does really help to sell the effect. So if I just zoom in, let me zoom in a little bit. So we can now see if I turn that smart filter on and off by clicking on the eyeball icon, you can see exactly what we've done there. So we've kept the face sharp. So the eyes are very important to be kept in focus all the time. And a lot of the hair detail that's close by. And then we've just left the blur to sort of fall off around her shoulders and then get more gradually more blurry around it. And again, this is completely to taste. You can not do this step at all and it will be fine, but you can really go crazy and just, um, be quite creative with it. So now we've got our photo and let's just go through the steps that we, we've done so far to get to this point. So the first thing we did was add a hue saturation slider to give it a sepia kind of tone. Then we added a brightness contrast adjustment layer to actually take out a lot of the contrast and give it a more faded look. Then we added a texture on top on the blend mode of multiply, which is just dirty the picture up, giving it some character, some like damage as if it's an old photo that's been hanging around for a long time. And then as a last step, we've added some selective blur to the image and we've brushed back in the focus around her face, which again, just helps to sell that kind of vintage look. And if we just zoom in, make sure we're happy with it. And the beauty about this is if you've got other photos now that you want to add this effect to, 
all you need to do is replace the model in the bottom of the layer and your texture and your contrast and your hue saturation can all stay there and it will then apply obviously that effect on top of any other photo and all you need to do then is just adjust this blur area to be suitable for your new image so that's it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, i would really appreciate if you could click the like button if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you want to be the first to see more content in the future but for now, I'm going to say I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.